very stable. Welcome to the episode of Jay Leno's Garage. You know, if you're a motorcyclist, you know Ducati's been on a bit of a roll lately. This is their latest model. This is Ducati Scrambler. Uh, really good looking bike. I, I'm not, you know, so many modern bikes, I don't like the styling. I like more classic retro looking styling. And this, I think, is really a great looking bike. It's about, what, uh, 803 cc, something like that, about 75 horsepower. Let's bring in uh, Jason Chinnick. He's been here before. He's the CEO of Ducati. You can tell he's a real biker because uh, this is like dressed up for a biker. This is, this is my idea dressed up. Just some kind of plaid shirt that doesn't match anything with some jeans. Just like me, just yet. It's all about the bikes, isn't that correct? Absolutely, that's yeah. what matters. People don't test, trust a tie and jacket on this show. Uh, good, this is really a terrific looking bike. Very nice. Tell, tell us what we have here. So this is actually the 2017 uh, Scrambler Ducati Cafe Racer. Okay. And uh, this bike was actually taken from uh, the concept from a lot of our customers that actually had bought the Scrambler Icon that we launched a couple years ago that we could talk about as well. And this bike came out because people were taking the bike, the, the Icon, and customizing it. Right. And wanting to turn it into kind of a cafe-inspired motorcycle. Yeah, this is kind of a new... Uh slot more or less the cafe scrambler i mean yeah you had scramblers which had the high pipes which i never really liked yeah. because they didn't go off road that much or you had the cafe which i like but you're so uncomfortable because <laughs> you like this one so this is sort of midway between you have a normal handlebar that doesn't sort of break your back especially when you're my age and you can drive it for a long time but without the fairing and all the other stuff you don't really need it's kind of a stripper bike what does this thing weigh it weighs under 400 pounds okay about 380, something like that? Somewhere around 380, you know, yeah. give or take a couple. Okay, yeah. You know, as you said, you're right. I mean, that's part of the concept behind the Scrambler is where we strip away all the unessential, really, and it's got to look good and it's got to run right. And what, it's a combination oil, air-cooled, is that what it is? Yeah, a little small oil cooler that's tucked in the front, okay. but it's that 800cc uh, two-valve air-cooled motor that we've been running for years in a lot of our bikes. Right, okay, very nice. Uh, single disc on the front because you don't need to, I guess. You don't need to, but also it's part of the look. You know, yeah. it's that stripper, stripped right. down, essential. One of the things that we did, though, different on this bike is that we upgraded the, uh, the front brake uh, uh, radial master cylinder. So you have a little bit more braking force because with this setup a bit sportier, you want to make sure that you're able to have that the stopping power that you want. And what you have here, is it a two valve or a four valve? Two valve. It's a two valve and you have your belt overhead drive. Yep. A couple of weeks ago we had some guys here from Australia that did that bevel drive. I'm sure you probably saw that. That yeah, was beautiful. Yeah, that's a great piece of Ducati history. So, and of course Ducati, I don't know what to say, it's like Italian, but in Italy they're the V-twin. In America the V-twin of course is Harley Davidson, but in Italy they're the V-twin and big V-twins, which is unusual. For Italy, wasn't it when when these came out? Absolutely. In fact, I mean the RV twins now all go all the way up to 1262, and yeah. with what you're talking a completely different motor with liquid cooled four valve versus the the kind of traditional air cooled two valve. And getting real horsepower out of twins, the Desmo Dici is what 186 or some crazy thing like that, almost 200 horsepower. Yeah, pushing 200 horsepower. <laughs> yeah, I mean, yeah, that's uh, that's pretty amazing. And of course, single seats bikes seem to be making a real. I know, real comeback. I mean, they've been out for a long time. But when I was a kid, almost every motorcycle was a dual seat, unless it was a, a factory racer or something yeah. like that. But now this seems to be the way to go, just do a single seat. And well, it's nice also because it's a little bit of a sleeper because yeah. it has that look of being a single seater. Right. But actually, this little cowling on the back slides right off. Oh, it's so does. just in case. Okay. And what do you do? Just you throw that by the side of the road when you give her a ride, then come back later. Depends hide on behind, who you're picking hide up. Hide behind a tree. I'll just, I'll just, just come, oh, you unbolt it and it comes out? Two little bolts out on the bottom, oh, okay. pop the seat off. And okay. It depends oh, on who's worth putting on the back. Yeah. I mean, this does look like what guys would do when they got a factory bike. They take off everything you don't need. And you got to have turn signals, so you just go with what the basic necessity is. And you got your you got your light down here and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, it's a really nice looking machine. Five speed, six speed? Six speed transmission. Oh, what is a six speed? Okay. Very nice. Is that a stainless exhaust? Yeah, stainless exhaust, and you were just asking about the transmission. You know, right. one of the things that's unique on this also that's different than the old dry clutches that sounded like somebody has a tambourine bolted. That was my biggest complaint with Ducati. 
I, I said it a light, especially with Desmo Dici. <laughs> you okay? I'm, I'm fine. Thank you. Yeah, it just sounded like a bunch of BBs rattling around in the primary cave. Well, they, we put on a wet clutch here. It's called an APTC clutch, which right. is a power torque clutch. That basically, when you're riding it, it allows you to crack through the through the uh, the gears without worrying about any clutch slippage. It's quiet, but then also it acts as uh, prevents you from having any lockup at the rear wheel if you downshift. You know, if you drop it into second gear from fourth, okay. and you let out the clutch a bit aggressively, it will back up a little bit. Oh, is that like reverse. a spray clutch? Is that what similar? Okay. Similar, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it reverses the torque on it so that you do okay. get so a little natural yeah. natural slippage. You know, I do that all the time because I have older bikes where you shift on the other side. You know, some English bikes pre-75, and you ride along after riding a modern bike, you, and you hit the brakes, you realize you've downshifted to first, and you lock up. Yeah, it's, uh, it's not good. No, it's not good. And what's the difference between these two bikes? So this is a Scrambler icon, and this is actually what launched rebirth of the Scrambler family. We brought this out a little over two years ago, and this was kind of, this was inspired by the Scramblers that came out, uh, and actually a bike that was built for the U.S. in 1962. Oh, okay. For the specifically U.S. market. And the idea was the importer at the time, uh, I believe it was Berliner, had actually wanted a bike that can be used in a bit of that Southern California lifestyle that kind of right. had the on-off-road aesthetic, but was comfortable, easy to ride. Well, I, made, I remember they made a big 450 single. Yeah. It was, I think it had the yellow tank, too, in it. Absolutely. Yeah. And this, in fact, this whole design is inspired from that original yeah, yeah. one with the chrome like side that. panels. And, and you got a nice high bar here. This has the more cafe bar style. Right? Yeah. Okay. So th but this would be like the base model? Yeah, that? this would be the, the entry into it. And, and uh, the engine, transmission, and the basic chassis is very similar. The big difference that you have is the ergonomics, more upright ride, uh, riding position, 18-inch right. uh, front wheel. And then this one, we actually swapped out and put a 17 on the front for okay. kind of quicker handling, a right. bit more of that sporty feel. Right, very cool. And of course, belt drive. Yes. Uh, yeah, it's a nice looking bike. It's amazing how modern bikes don't have any chrome at all on them anymore, do they? No, it's actually one of the things that we, we've gotten away from as yeah. well. I mean, it's, you know, for us, it's a matter of muted colors, uh, right. stuff that's brushed, polished, even. Then they all come with a number 54? Yes, all of the cafes come with the number 54. And what's the significance of that? It was actually the name, uh, the number of a very famous racer of ours that ran from the late 50s all the way up in the early 70s, a guy named Bruno Spaggiotti. Oh, okay. And he always ran under the number 54 right. or 9, which is 5 plus 4. 5 plus 4. Okay. And so this guy actually took one of the first scrambler motors, a 350 motor, and raced uh, a very famous race in Italy that's been long since gone. Uh, and and he took a 350 scrambler motor like the ones you're talking about and hot rodded it and bolted it into a race chassis oh, and okay. it inspired us to kind of take that sporting heritage from the scrambler motor and help to tell the story as well. Very nice and of course you have, your, your tack is built into, boy this is a nice comfortable riding position. Yeah. Boy it really is. So tack, speedometer, it's all right in here. All your stuff is right into that single yeah. instrument cluster and that kind of offset like the old Vigalias. Cool. And you got these are the factory bar end mirrors. Yep. Cool. Yeah, those are really nice. I remember I had a, my old MV Augusta had these bar end mirrors, and I could always see what my shoulder was doing, but I couldn't see anything else. So then when that uh, series Aura came out about a long time ago now, 17 yeah. years ago. Oh, I got one of those, and it's got new bar, and the <laughs> same thing, I couldn't never see that. But these, I can actually see past my shoulders. Yeah, and you can even yeah. rotate them out a little bit, yeah, so if you do okay. need, you do need cool. to see a bit more. Can we uh, take this for a ride? I was hoping you would ask. Let's do it. Well, initial impression, boy, it feels really light, and I love these bar and mirrors. These are, they don't vibrate, and I can actually see what's behind me. You know, that's the most frustrating thing about a lot of cafe bikes. You just can't, you can't see what's behind you. They're looking at your shoulder all the time, as I said, or, or they vibrate so much. But even at high revs, these don't vibrate at all. It's really nice. You know, this bike has 75 horsepower, which these days doesn't seem like a lot. But like when my Vincent Black Shadow first came out in the 50s, it was the world's fastest production motorcycle. And it had 55 horsepower, and they thought, well, that's just too much. 
That's just crazy. You know, 75 horsepower is pretty good when you weigh under 400 pounds. It really gives you a lot of, uh, a lot of power. The power to ratio is very good on this bike. Um, boy, but it's just so flickable. That's what's so nice. And I love the position of these bars. Tachometer is a little tricky to read. I wish it changed color so when so you can see from your eye, oh, you're in the yellow, you're getting the red, so you wouldn't have to look down at it because it, the pickup is pretty good on this bike. But that being said, most twins you kind of shift by ear anyway. You don't really need the tack, but it is nice to have. This riding position is really comfortable. A little bit of a forward lean, but not so much that your shoulders ache. And at this speed of like 70, 75, the wind keeps you up very nicely. You know, I'm so used to heavyweight bikes like Harleys and Indians and even some of the big uh, Kawasaki's and Suzuki's and stuff. This is so light and nice, it's really kind of cool. I mean, this is the size of 400 would have been, I think, uh, years ago. Not twitchy, very secure on the freeway. I mean, here in LA, you got these rain grooves on all the roads, but it doesn't follow them. As he said, the wheelbase is a little shorter on this. So it's, it's kind of funny not to be able to see the front wheel while you're uh, while you're riding the bike. Very stable. Well, this thing's a lot of fun. You know, if you can only have one bike, this is pretty much all you need. I mean, it's light. And it's really light, it's really flickable. You know, I've got a 64 Triumph Bonneville that weighs about the same as this, maybe a little bit less. And it's not that it's the speed, it's just, it's so easy just to flick around. I like any motorcycle I can pick up with one hand. You know, one time I was at the rock store and this highway patrol guy comes in a big Harley and it's got the lights and a medical kit. It must have weighed about 900 pounds and it fell over and everybody's laughing at him until he reached out with one hand and picked it up and people went, okay, not gonna mess with this guy. So any bike I can pick up with one hand is, is pretty good. You know, it's not that it does any one thing unbelievable, it just does everything really well. It handles nice on the freeway at 80 miles an hour, no vibration in the mirrors, and with six speeds, there's no, uh, you don't get any vibration through the handlebars. Um, it's, it's really a really nice bike. I mean, I imagine you could take it in the dirt a little bit if you wanted. You could do pretty much anything you want with it. It's pretty much a pretty cool all-around motorcycle. That's what I like. The only thing I would change is I wish the speedometer changed color when you got near red line. Not that you need red line so much on a V-twin, but just so, so I would see the color of the corner of my eye without having to look down. But other than that, uh, no, I think it's really, it's really pretty neat. I'm not a feet forward kind of guy. I like the traditional retro kind of feel and look to the bike. But the key thing is the power to rate ratio is great. It's really flickable. You can take your hands off the bars at 80. You get none of this. It doesn't shake, doesn't follow rain grooves. It's really impressive. Like I said, if you just had one bike, this would, uh, this would pretty much fit the bill. So good to see Ducati's getting their act together. This is, uh, I think this is going to be a big seller. Jason, thank you, my friend. Thank you for bringing it by. My pleasure, Jay. I'm glad see, you this, had fun. See, this is what bike CEO should dress like. This is, yeah, yeah. This is. You said you don't trust anybody in the time. I don't trust any, no, you know, you, you've seen the marketing guys. You know what I'm talking about. No, he's the real deal. That's why, uh, that's why this is such a cool bike, because it gets a lot of input from guys like him and from guys like us. And that's uh, Ducati's been listening. So 
Congratulations. See you guys next week. Mm-hmm. <laughs>